seeing this car back on these wheels just it's just sad but it's okay we have wheels coming soon hopefully I went ahead and put the uh, the plate frames back on just for a little while because once I get my temporary plate it's not this size it's smaller and I don't want to drill more holes for that one so I want to be able to like zip tie it to this thing just for the time being once we get our actual plates I'll probably go double sided tape or magnets um, now it's a nice clean looking no uh, no bracket at all but I mean it's not a uh, it's not a terrible look all right so today's plan is a part that I've had for quite a while it's right here this is a OMP rear strut bar that I got from Omar a long time ago. The original plan with this was to put it on Miley, but we found out that this bar, how it goes in because of like how the rear end of the Jetta is, this won't fit in the Jetta. So I'm pretty sure it fits in a Golf or a Cabrio and that's it. So I'm going to go test it out real quick. If the dimensions are good and it will fit, we'll go ahead and paint it and we'll put it in the car. If not, then I don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe it's a good smacking someone's stick. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Alright, let's go ahead and get you opened up here. I don't know if I'll have to remove the tray cover here. I don't think I will. I think it should fit underneath it, but just for sheer dimensions wise, let's see. You put that set over there. Just to kind of set it in here to see. Okay, well it's not gonna say, but still, dimensions wise, looks exactly the same as like obviously a Jetta or a Cabrio, but it looks like it's gonna fit and we have room this time. So I think. I think this should be good to go. So now let's go ahead and get it painted. Actually, let's, let's test fit it first. Just make sure we're not missing anything. And then if it fits with a test fit, then we'll paint it and get it put in there. Okay, so dimension-wise, it fits no problem. And then how you install it, you take the uh, the top nut off your strut there. And then use that same one to lock this on top. And then it'll sit somewhat like like that and I think I think it's gonna work with this still here I hope it does because I like having this here so we'll see kind of cool I just noticed here on the little privacy cover it has the year of the car and some other like uh, the part number and some other cool things in there it's pretty neat so the next step here is going to be to sand this down because it's got some layers of paint yellow and black and there's some silver underneath that and then we're gonna get it painted nice and clean once this is drying we're gonna run to the store quick grab some new spark plugs because I'm pretty sure the ones in this car are not the right ones. I, they look wrong and I pulled them out and the bottoms look very, very black. So new spark plug for the car and maybe a strut bar for the rear if it fits properly, which I hope it does. Got the strut bar looking nice and glossy. Once we get back, we'll hit with the layer of clear coat once it's dry. Uh, and then it'll look really, really good. But for now, we're gonna hop in the other green car, head to, I think we're gonna have to head to Volkswagen today because they're right in town, grab a set of spark plugs and maybe even a cabin filter and an air filter if they have it in stock, which I don't know if they will or not, but if they do, snag those. But if not, definitely, hopefully grab a set of spark plugs and have this car. I mean, it runs good now, but those plugs, they look really nasty on the bottom and they just don't fit right, I don't think. So new set of plugs and hopefully this thing will be good to go. All right, Grace, let's go. Bye! This looks so good. Such a nice day out today. So I'm just about to Volkswagen now and I realized that I didn't write down the VIN number off the Savoy. Um, coming from a deal, I used to work at a dealership in parts so I know they love to have the, the VIN number. It makes it easier for them. But hopefully we can still get it without that. I hope they speak some English. If not, this might be a, a, a tricky time. But we should be okay, I think. There she is, the Volkswagen dealership. I think this is the place to go. I think. Okay, we found ourselves a parking spot behind this little Polo Fun and what looks like to be an all track. That says service, I'm assuming parts is hopefully in there. Uh, wish us luck. Okay, so um, no luck getting spark plugs in and having, they would have had to order them. So I'm gonna try GK, just gonna have them today, hopefully. Um, but let me just tell you, that service area was so cool. There's so many little, like they had like the Volkswagen bus Lego sets in there, the Volkswagen ketchup, they have Volkswagen noodles, they have all these cool like metal wall hanging signs. They have so much just like awesome decoration stuff in there. I'm gonna have to come back with the small cameras so you, you guys can see, um, but I wanna buy everything in there. It's so much just awesome stuff. They also have a 20th anniversary Mark III GTI sitting there as well. Beautiful, it's black, has a GTI seat, pretty much all the parts I pulled off that one in the junk car, this car has, it looks so good. That's awesome. And I met this guy named Michael, very, very cool dude. Uh, I might come back later today if I don't have my GK and just get them ordered, but still, 
That is one of the coolest little shorts I've ever seen in my life. Ooh, ooh, check it out. Yeah, America. Things are so cool. Big score, so shout out to GK because I got four spark plugs, cabin filter, and our air filter. All of these for $45, which at Volkswagen, they wanted 57 euro for just four spark plugs. So I thought it'd be cool to go to Volkswagen and get parts, but then I forgot how much dealership prices actually are. I mean, I work there, so I know what the markup is. But so we're all set, spark plugs, cabin filter, air filter. Let's go home, get these installed, and then also our rear strut bar. Back home now, and our brace is looking real nice. Gonna throw a layer of clear coat on it, and while that's drying, we're gonna get all of this fun stuff put into the car. Engine band, this car is looking really, really good. I am gonna paint this one right here uh, back to black, the entire thing. Uh, that way, the metal portion doesn't corrode or like rust. But other than that, it looks really good. I have to do the trans section down there and more of the block section here, or well, the head section there. But other than that, for 94, it looks good. I wish I would have left the rain tray off until I had the cabin filter in because now I have to pull it back off again. And it's just a pain. I got it off the first time, nothing broke, which is a miracle. So let's see if we can do it again. And then we'll open this up and see how bad the air filter is. Someone has suggested that I film. Normally I don't film the TD cell stuff, but someone said they wanted to see it. So here we go. We're gonna pull off the passenger wiper. I probably can get this side off without it, but I don't want to try and scratch up my fancy, nicely painted rain tray. So. We'll see how smooth we can do this. Alright, if you've never pulled off a wiper before, it's easy. Pop off your cap, 13 millimeter nuts. And you kind of grab the base and yank it until it comes off. Sometimes they're a pain, sometimes they come off like nothing ever happened. I think the trick is though, there's a washer that's in here. Make sure you pull the washer out too with the nuts. Cause I think the washer gets caught and causes it to stick a little bit. Alright. Let's see. Give it. Just want the wiper. No, we're not doing it today. Maybe if you go on the back side over here. There she is. All right, cool. Wipers out. Now my favorite part ever, taking off these stupid screws. The trick is to have a flathead underneath the piece you're spinning to lift up and out, which seems, it, I don't know, these ones kind of work kind of well, better than the ones on Miley at least. Who knows, look at that. Maybe my luck is changing and I should get good at this. One down, three to go. I'm also trying to not scratch this, I just painted all this stuff. Out you go. Ah, need that. Yes! It's like I know what I'm doing. That's fantastic. Oh my goodness. We're on a roll today, boys. The last one's kind of tricky because this one is kind of stripped. But these end ones are different than the first ones. You can kind of just pry up on it, I think, and pop it all the way out. I don't know, it's a pain. Yes. Ha, ah, we've done it. Look at us go. All right, once all of your screws are out, we're gonna remove this piece here. Slide your center tap here over. And then we're gonna kind of lightly wiggle this out of here. Hee! Look at us go. 
Look at us doing things. Once that's off, there's your cabin filter. Not all Mark III's have a cabin filter like this. I know Miley does not, um, but this one has it. So if you watch the video of me cleaning the engine bay, this was all filled to like here which is leaves and dirt and it's much cleaner. Now I clean this cabin filter out, but obviously a new one's much better. So we're gonna swap the one out first and then we'll go on to this and then onto those. All right, we have our old filter here. As you can see, it's very, very dirty and gross. Let's go ahead and get those out of the way. Our fancy new one. Just a, just a slight, slight difference. I mean, it's not much, but you can see this is obviously the uh, the new one there. I probably I can only assume this has probably never been changed. The car only has about 130,000 miles on it, but I can only assume this has never been changed. So out with that one, it has a label that shows where the air should go through. So you know to put it this way, and then in the car she goes, and we're done. Nice and easy. Look at that. Easy peasy. Buy him. Next up, we'll pull off the uh, the top of the airbox here and replace our air filter. It's funny, like how far I've gotten with cars. Because when I first got my car, Miley, years ago, I was like so afraid to pull anything off the car. Like I knew I had to do, like an oil change, but like to actually start opening things up, I was like, I don't want to pull it apart and break it. But then I learned you just you just gotta send it. If it breaks, it breaks. Then you can fix it later. But it is what it is. So this one should have a tab there. This one is already off. That's that's good. We should be able to up and lift right out. And easy as that. This actually doesn't look too bad. But I'm sure a new one will help. Eh, not that bad. Could be worse. The one in the car wasn't like that dirty, but obviously you can tell the difference between new and old. So this one should help the car breathe a bit better. Last up will be spark plugs. And I have to say, I absolutely love how this motor is set up because there's literally nothing in your way. Nothing. There's no manifold. There's no, this is like the easiest thing in the entire world. This setup is great. Spark plugs are out. I'll let you guys guess which ones are the, um, are the old ones. Those ones that are very nasty and disgusting. Now, one thing I haven't seen before um, these ones here, the new ones, I just got the NGK ones with the R for racing. That I, have, I think it's the same one I have in Miley, actually. Um, but these ones don't have this little top piece. It actually screws off. I've never actually seen this before. Or ever unscrewed before. But I'm pretty sure I just transfer these over to this and then we're good to go. Yeah, like that. So, see that works. I have to say, this is hands down one of the easiest motors to ever work on like there's not an engine cover to move there's nothing at all in your way you simply just you're there so so convenient and so nice not a lot of power but at least they make it easy to work on everything's in place new spark plugs in new air filter new cabin filter let's make sure the car still runs i can't see why it wouldn't but always want to double check nice at this point in terms of engine maintenance i think we're just about done um, we've done cabin filter air filter spark plugs coil pack distributor cap all the plug wires we've done an oil chain other than that the car is running very very well the last thing i want to do is once we get our temporary plate for the car and i start driving it i want to burn the rest of this old gas out of here because this car's been sitting for three months just that i've seen it so the gas just smells old get some fresh gas in the car and we should be completely set final thing today get this nice little bar Hopefully in the back of the car with no issues. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the tray here and the cover, just make it easier to access the top of the strut. And then once the bar's in, hopefully this will fit back over it uh, with no problem. And I also need to clean up here because it's very dirty. It's not rusty at all, it's just dirty and gross and I haven't cleaned it yet. So that also needs to get done today. All right, before we get into that, I've made a quick discovery. So I was still in my brain, I was like, I don't get why these don't fit onto the spark plugs that they should because like, normally you put them on and it's supposed to click like watch this I put this on like that's as far as it goes see how loose that is like that's as far as it'll go and it's very very loose and then I tried something else I pulled that little top piece I pulled this little top piece back off I thought it was so weird they would sell me spark plugs that didn't have the piece but I don't think I need that piece because what I'm finding out now is inside of the um, the plug wire itself is hitting on here and it's actually not popping out properly. So on this one here, I've actually pulled that top piece off. And if you listen, 
Ready? Hear that click? Now it's nice and tight, see this? Nice and tight, nice and tight, look at this. Loose, that's as far as it'll go. So I'm pretty sure I don't need those at all. I'm gonna pull all of them off real quick and then try the car again. It still ran before, but like, barely made it down there. So I'm pretty sure I don't need those at all. Cause I can't imagine they would sell it to me without a part I was needing. So we're gonna try it real quick and see if it still runs. Like I said, I've personally never seen spark plugs that had removable top piece like this. Normally it's all just one piece or I've just never noticed it came off, but I've never seen it go in like this. So, but if that's the way it's supposed to be, which it might be, we'll see, we'll try it. Okay, let's see if that's what she needed. Like I said, the car ran fine before, but I feel like it definitely needed that. Let's see here. It seems to be idling the same, um, but what I think was happening is sometimes when I would rev the car, it would have like a little tiny hiccup, which is why I thought the crank sensor might be going bad, or it's already bad possibly, but um, it might just be when the engine moved and those cables were so loose on top of the spark plugs, a little bit of like separation with the connection might have caused that. So I'm gonna let it idle for a little while and just see if it's any better. Um, I still wanna put a new crank sensor in as well, but I think this is the right way to do it. I don't think I needed those pieces at all because like having your plug wires wiggle that much, which is weird. This feels a lot better now. Trays out, which is easy to remove these pieces. I believe it's just one little 10 millimeter um, metal nut piece that is right on the bottom side here and then one right here next to the tower and you should be able to just pop the entire thing straight up and out. Looks like it's just popped straight up and out. This one's out, this one's out, I think it's just up. Aha! Easy, look at that. And look at that, we have so much access. This is why golfs and cabbers are nice because in a Jetta you have to squeeze your hand underneath like a metal piece and everything's in the way. In this car, you, there's nothing in your way. Between the engine and the back side of this car, it's very easy to work on. Yes, oh, there's a light detector in this one. Get out of there. Actually, we'll set you down. We can go far away. That'll be fine for now. Okay, now we're ready. So all we need to do is remove that top nut, which I believe is the 17 on both sides, and then use that same nut to screw that down, and then we're done. Easy. I'm just hoping this fits over top of it because I like that a lot. It's nice, so we'll see. It's kind of funny because up until this point, I never really cared to have a golf. I always thought they're like, they look cool, but I never cared to actually have one. And I'm so glad that I have one now because this car is like, it's a great little car. Now granted, it's a Volkswagen. I'm sure at some point it's gonna break and piss me off. But for right now, I'm enjoying it so far. It's a fun little car. Get off of there. Yes. It's not tightened down all the way yet, but looks pretty cool so far. I decided to pull this little piece off as well because this pretty much does the exact same thing that piece was doing, so I don't need both. And I wanted to sit just a little bit lower just to try to make sure that that still fits in the car with these little side pieces. So I'm gonna tighten it down now, put everything back together and hope it all fits. Tight. Look at that. Look at that. I can already feel the G's I'm gonna pull in these turns. Look at that, your freaking race car. Full blown race car. I think it's a cool little touch and I was sad because I couldn't use it on Miley so I'm pretty excited I kept it and now I'm using it on the Savoy here in Germany so that's pretty sick. Now the big question is will my pieces fit back in the car? Look at that. It fits. It fits. Beautiful. Now she's a secret race car. Nobody will know. That's pretty cool. I'm excited about that a lot. Yes. The thing is now, now I want it chrome. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe once I get some stuff together, we'll send a shipment off to Christian and get it all chromed up because that'll look really good, I think. We are looking good, boys. We are looking good. So the plan with this car, well, just the plan in general for videos in the next couple weeks, obviously, number one, we're just waiting for that phone call or that email saying that Miley is at the base and we can finally go get her, get her inspected, all kind of fun stuff, which is going to be a whole thing in its itself. Hopefully she passes, but... I don't know, we'll see about all that. But in terms of this car here, I need to get over to, to Sembach at some point and get temporary plates in the car so we can start driving it. Um, and then get it inspected. Once it passes inspection, which it should, knowing what I know from the R32 in the green car, um, this car should be completely good to go, no issues. 
uh, I, I can't see why it wouldn't pass. So hopefully that goes really well. Once the car passes, then it's time for wheel, it's time for low, swap out my steering wheel, and just all that kind of fun stuff. But I wanna keep it stock for now, that way it passes, and once it does, then we can do whatever we want. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh wait, before we end this video, hold on. I know you're curious. I know you're curious. Little Sunflower update, look at those things. They're going so, so well. Also, I'm over here, check this out. Bam, look at that, I got one, two, three, four, five more going over here. Pretty much, this is gonna turn from a car channel into a gardening channel, because I'm pretty much uh, the best gardener there's ever been. If you made it this far in the video, I was honestly surprised by last video, how many of you made it to the very, very end. I didn't think people watched that long, but it's awesome you guys do. So if you made it to the end of this video, let's go ahead and comment, let's comment Savoy. Just comment Savoy, all you gotta do. But other than that, we're done with the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget, be thankful for today. We'll see you guys next time, peace.